Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? Today, right now you're going to war. You are going into war with your opponent. You're going into war with yourself. You are not scared. You are prepared. You are not weak. You are a machine, a freak. Are you focused? I am focused. I am focused. I am focused. Yes, you are. You are focused and you will not lose sight of that. Not today, not tomorrow, next week or next year. Repeat after me. Today is my day. Welcome to the subject, Contemporary Philippine Arts from the Regions. Let us watch and listen. I prepared three things for you to learn. Number one, we have the definition of arts and contemporary arts. That's the first learning topic that I have to explain. Number two, we'll be having the comparison between contemporary arts and traditional arts. And later, you will find out as well, bakit kailangan i-compare ang dalawang ito? And finally, number three, I'll be giving you as well an overview about the different contemporary art forms and the different regions of the Philippines. Mula Apari hanggang Holo para malaman ano ba ang mga contemporary arts na nag -e exist sa mga lugar na yan. Okay? So let us now proceed with our discussion. When you were in elementary or even when you were in junior high school, Every first day of your MAPE classes under arts, ang unang ginagawa ni teacher ay define yung salitang sining. Ano ba ang kahulugan ng arts? Ano ba ang ginagampanan nito sa ating buhay? Basically, that's Arts 101. But this time around, since you are now a grade 12 student, I'm expecting na alam na ang ibig sabihin talaga ng salitang sining. Kaya allow me to have only a throwback definition of it. So what is art? It states that art is the expression or application of human creative skill and imagination, producing works to be appreciated primarily for the beauty or emotional power. Art is influential class, okay? But hindi siya magiging influential kung mananatili lang yan sa ating imagination. All of us have creative imagination, mapaglaro ang ating kaisipan. Pero para masabi natin ang imahinasyon natin ay bahagi na ng sining, we have to produce it as a product or as a performance. So basically, as long as iniisip mo lang yan, hindi pa yan sining. Magiging sining lang yan if you're going to make it as a product or a performance. Para saan? To express yourself, to influence other people, and many reasons kung bakit natin produce ang creative imagination natin. So a while ago, I said that we have to convert our creative imagination into a product or into a performance. Why? Because art is a form of creative activity. And what are these activities? It could be a painting, a music, literature, or a dance. Class, kapag sinabi nating arts, hindi lang yan painting, hindi lang yan drawing. Napakalawak ng mundo ng sining. Ang sining ay tumutukoy hindi lamang sa pagpipinta. Masasabi nating sining ang isang kanta, lalong-lalo na kapag galing ito sa malikhaing imahinasyon. Pwede rin nating sabihin na ang sining ay tumutukoy sa panitikan, literature, the way we write poems, the way we write stories, it is a product of creative activity. It is a product of art. And even the movements that we have, our body movements, once we produce it or once we convert it into a dance presentation, then it is a product of art. So starting today, don't think that this subject is just about drawing, that this subject is just about painting. No, we are going to learn different fields, different forms of art. 
So basically, that's the definition of arts. Now, look at the next slide. As you can see, sa left side, mayroong larawan, at sa right side ay makikita ang salitang future. What does it mean? Isa lang ang ibig sabihin niyan, class. Simula pa man noong una, hanggang sa kasalukuyan, at hanggang sa hinaharap, patuloy na lalago, uunlad, ang larangan ng sining. But look at the words sa itaas. Prehistoric to modern. I know these words are already familiar to you because these are the arts that you learned when you were in junior high school. Prehistoric and civilizations, iyan ang mga sining na ginamit at ginawa ng mga unang tao. When you were in grade 8, you learned Asian art. And that's an example of continental arts. Pagdating naman ninyo ng grade 9, you encountered the terms medieval, renaissance, and baroque art. And of course, come grade 10, you learned so much about neoclassic, romantic, and the last is modern art. Kaya naman, ang akala natin, modern art is the arts that we have right now. Mamaya itatake natin ano ba ang difference between modern art and the arts that we have right now. Okay? But now, look at the diagram on the next slide. Makikita natin kung paano umunlad ang larangan ng sining at sa anong aspeto ito umunlad. Example, from Greek period, ang na-develop ay ang pamamaraan or the techniques in the world of art. Pero pagdating ng Roman period, ang na-develop in the aspect of arts ay ang skills. Come Christian period, what we have developed in this field is the craftsmanship. Pero pagdating ng Renaissance period, it's evident that the aspect of being a genius and mostly ang focus ay ang design ay ang talagang na-develop sa Renaissance period. Pagdating ng modern art, dyan papasok yung fine arts, the technicalities, mabusisi, and of course, detalyadong sining. And in Romantic period, it's all about self-expression. Now that we are in the present, Jan papasok ang contemporary era, ang kasalukuyang panahon na nagbibigay sa atin ng bagong forms or ng bagong mukha ng sining. That's why at this point in time, let's define the word contemporary arts. So what is the meaning of contemporary arts? Contemporary art class is defined as the art that springs out of the present-day events and passions of the society. Kaya madalas na pagpapalit ang modern art sa contemporary art. Ang akala ng karamihan, ang mga arts na ginawa sa kasalukuyan ay tinatawag na modern. But again, when we say modern art, these are the artworks that were produced in the 1860s hanggang 1960s or 1970s. Pero after that, ang sumunod na stage ay ang tinatawag nating contemporary art. Pero hindi lang yan class because contemporary arts is considered as the newest form of art, amusing people from the late 1960s or early around 1970s up to this very minute. Because basically, just like what I said, it passions of the society. Kung sa modern art, more of self-expression, more of the strategies and the designs, here in the contemporary arts, ang purpose, malalaman natin yan as we go on with our discussion. So now that we know the definition of contemporary arts at kung kailan ito nagsimula, again, it started from the late 1960s or early around 1970s hanggang sa kasalukuyan, let's have the characteristic naman ng sining na ito. Ano ba ang dahilan bakit masasabi natin that contemporary arts is special? Why is it unique? I'd like you to know that this art functions in a global society that is culturally diverse and technology-oriented. Ibig sabihin, ang contemporary arts ay hindi tungkol sa craftsmanship. Hindi ito tungkol sa techniques. Hindi rin ito tungkol sa technicalities katulad ng modern period wherein fine arts were developed. It is also not about the genius and the design aspect na meron ang Renaissance period naman. At hindi ito katulad ng Romantic period 
na it's all about self-expression. But again, when we say contemporary arts, it is technology-oriented and it is culturally diverse. Ibig sabihin, sa kasalukuyang panahon, sinasakop nito ang lipunang ginagalawan natin. Also, contemporary arts has become a collaborative process and the Ojins plays an active role in reacting and constructing meaning about the work of art. What does it mean? Hindi ito katulad ng mga naunang uri ng sining na kung saan umiikot lamang ang mensahe sa artist. But when we say collaborative process, you as the Ojins of that particular masterpiece ay may mahalagang ginagampanan in understanding the message of it. Kaya naman, the question is, why do we need to study contemporary arts? Grade 12 students, I'd like you to know that contemporary art is essential or important, hindi dahil ito ay nasa panahon ninyo. But instead, mahalaga na matutunan ang kontemporaryong sining because it serves as a form of expression of the people's present feelings and longings especially the issues in the society that we are facing today. Nagiging channel, nagiging avenue ng mga artists ang kasalukuyang panahon upang magbigay ng mensahe sa mga taong nakakakita ng kanilang mga masterpieces o ng kanilang produkto. That's why indeed, contemporary arts are very important. In addition, contemporary works of art are the means through which the artists of today communicate their sentiments. Mas nagiging malinaw, mas nagiging malalim ang ating pagkakaunawa sa isang bagay dahil sa mga produkto ng sining na ito. Kaya nga ang sabi ko kanina, kapag sinabi natin contemporary arts, hindi ito tungkol sa design, hindi ito tungkol sa technique or skills na ginamit ng artists. But the message na gustong iparating sa atin upang mas maging malawak ang ating pangunawa, lalong-lalong na sa mga bagay na nangyayari sa ating lipunan. Now look at the picture on the screen. Makikita natin ang dalawang produkto ng sining sa magkaibang panahon. Ang nasa kaliwa ay produkto ng modern art at ang nasa kanan naman ay ang produkto ng contemporary art. As you observe, halos magkamukha lamang. Kasi halos pareho ng disenyo, halos pareho ng techniques. Pero ano ang pinagkaiba nilang dalawa? Ang pinagkaiba nila ay ang mensahe na ipinaparating sa atin. Again, modern art has something to do with the techniques and styles. It focuses on the strategies na ginamit ng artist. But when it comes to contemporary art, regardless of the techniques, regardless of the design, Ang mahalaga ay kung ano ang mensahe na may kinalaman sa ating lipunan o sa ating society na ginagalawan ang dapat nakafocus ang ating attention. So after learning the definition of contemporary art, especially its difference sa modern art, let's localize our learning by discussing contemporary arts in the country or here in the Philippines. I know na you are aware with the kind of arts we have in the country. Napakakulay, napakayaman, napakasigla, and of course, natatangi sa daigdig. Kaya naman, bago natin tuluyang talakayin ang contemporary arts sa ating bansa, ay magbalik muna tayo sa bahagi ng ating kasaysayan kung bakit kakaiba ang sining sa bansang Pilipinas. Look at the screen right now. Okay? I have here a diagram that shows Paano ba na-develop ang sining na meron tayo sa kasalukuyan? Sa ethnic art, ito ay tumutukoy sa mga sining ng sinaunang Pilipino. I'd like you to know that these are integral to our present situation because it reflects the importance of life. On the other hand, sa Islamic art naman, ipinakilala sa ating bansa ang mga tinatawag nating geometric designs na kung saan from informal ethnic art nagkakaroon na ng patterns and shapes ang mga produkto ng sining. Pagdating naman ng Spanish era, most of our arts reflects the faith and catechism since we all know the fact naman then that we were colonized by the Spaniards for 333 years 
And basically, one of the main reasons why we were colonized is to spread Christianity. And of course, pagdating ng American era, the occupation of the American here in the country, ipinakilala ang secular forms of arts. Most probably, from Spanish era to American era, westernized ang uri ng sining. Kaya naman, pagdating ng pananako ng mga hapon, ay nakita natin ang malaking pagbabago sa uri at klase ng sining na meron tayo. This is the phase where na-orientalize ang ating sining. Ibig sabihin, hindi na westernized kung sa ang rehiyon sa mundo tayo nasasakop ay nagkaroon ng inclusion ang ating bansa to that particular era. And of course, right after we gain independence, right after we achieve freedom from the colonizers, papasok ang tinatawag nating modern era. It has something to do with our national identity. And sa kasalukuyan, since meron na tayong kalayaan, malaya na tayong nakakapagpahayag ng ating mga ekspresyon, this is now the contemporary era in the Philippines. Social realism. Pinapakita sa ating mga sining ang tunay na kalagayan ng ating bansa, ang tunay na sitwasyon, and basically malayang pamamahayag in a particular issue. Gayun pa man, grade 12 students, even though we are now enjoying the contemporary era, especially in the field of arts, ay hindi pa rin nawawala sa maraming Filipino artists ang pagmamahal sa ating bayan, especially sa ating pinagmulan. Na kahit tayo ay nasa contemporary era na, ay patuloy pa rin silang gumagawa ng mga produkto ng sining na kanilang nakagisnan na at nakalakihan. At ito yung tinatawag nating traditional arts. Ano ba ang pagkakaiba ng traditional sa contemporary arts? Ito yung characteristics ng traditional arts in the Philippines. When we say traditional arts, these are art representations. And mostly, they are culture-bounded. Aside from they are culture-bounded, sumasalamin ang pinanggalingan ng ating lahi, ng mga ninunong Pilipino, they mostly focus on realistic figures. Ibig sabihin, kung ano ang nakikita sa paligid, ganun-ganon ang iprono-produce. Sapagkat alam naman natin, and the uh, time of our forefathers o yung ating mga ninuno ay wala pang kamera. Napakasimple at payak ng pamumuhay. And of course, traditional arts are limited to structures. At ang traditional arts ang isa sa mga naging balakid kung bakit May mga ilang Pilipino artists ang naging mahirap ang adjustment when it comes to creating a contemporary artwork. Why? Because contemporary artwork revolve around the artist on his or her feelings. And of course, not just on his or her feelings, but to focus the message to his or her audience. And when we say contemporary arts, here in the Philippines, it is diverse when it comes to the materials, media, style, and it is not bounded by any rule or standard. And that is the challenge for us, especially to our artists here in the Philippines. Kaya naman, to give you an overview about the contemporary arts in the different regions of the Philippines, from the northernmost island in the country, which is Wayami Island, to southernmost island of the country, which is Sitangkay in Tawi-Tawi. Kabilang na rin ang easternmost and westernmost part of the country, the Caraga Davao Oriental and Balabak Palawan. In this video, we're going to look at some of the major benefits, both physical and mental, that an exercise program can bring to your life. Let's start with the physical benefits. Number one, cardiovascular and respiratory improvement. Over time, you end up strengthening the cardiac muscle that surrounds your heart. You also pump a greater volume of blood with each stroke, which causes a decrease in resting heart rate. You do a lot more red blood cells, which improves your ability to bring oxygen to your muscles, 
and your lungs become stronger and better at supplying your body with the oxygen it needs. Number two, reduction in health risk factors. Regular exercise can reduce your risk of cardiovascular disease, developing type 2 diabetes, and metabolic syndrome. Research also shows that active people have a lower risk of colon and breast cancer, and regular exercise can also increase your chances of living longer. Number three, increased metabolic rate. Metabolic rate is the rate at which your body burns calories. During exercise, you obviously burn more calories than when at rest. However, your metabolic rate at rest is enhanced even after your workout session is completed as your body uses energy to repair muscles and replenish ATP storage and glycogen storage. This does depend on several factors, including the intensity of the exercise and your current fitness level. Number four, decreased risk of falls. Incorporating balance, coordination, and muscle strengthening activities into your exercise program can improve your motor skills, thus reducing the risk of falling. Number five, bone health improved. Impact activities such as plyometrics and jumping and resistance training can slow the loss of bone density that comes with age. Playing sports that involve running and jumping can be advantageous as well. Number six, weight loss and reduced obesity. Physical activity can be a key part of a complete weight management plan to avoid excessive fat gain and to maintain a healthy weight. Regular exercise burns more calories and increases muscle mass, both of which are key to weight loss and weight maintenance. Now let's take a look at the mental benefits. Number one, increased feelings of well-being. Exercising enhances the action of endorphins and encephalins, which improve natural immunity and reduce the perception of pain. Regular exercise can also improve mood, feelings of having more energy, and overall quality of life. Number two, better sleep. Research has shown that regular exercise helps people fall asleep faster and enjoy a deeper sleep. It can also improve sleep duration and decrease middle-of-the-night wake-ups, providing a better overall sleep quality. Number three, better brain function. Regular exercise can reduce fatigue, which can improve alertness and concentration, Physical activity improves blood circulation, which delivers oxygen to the brain at a faster pace, which leads to sharper thinking. Number four, increased self-esteem. Regular exercise can improve your body shape, increasing your confidence in your appearance, thus increasing your self-esteem. Exercise also promotes a sense of accomplishment, which can increase your confidence in taking on other tasks in your life. And that would be some of the major physical and mental benefits of an exercise program. Derivo.